Good morning and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to try to answer to all the questions you've asked me on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, a lot of very, very precise and uh, very interesting questions. So let's go straight to the point. So I had a lot of questions on the engine, how the powertrain works in Formula One. So I will try to make it as brief and as easy as I can. So in 2014, F1 introduced uh, this new power unit that has basically four elements. So there is the internal combustion engine, which is a 1.6 liter V6 turbocharged. We have an energy recovering system, Earth, which includes the energy store, the battery, an electric kinetic motor generator unit for MGUK, and an electric motor linked to the turbine called HITS motor generator unit, or MGUH. So the internal combustion engine is a 1.6 liter V6 turbocharged. The turbo includes two main units, the turbine and the compressor. The air comes in from the airbox into the compressor, then it gets compressed and it goes into the engine combustion chamber. Since the compression heats up the air, in between the compressor and the combustion chamber, there is an intercooler. Uh, you have to understand that the rule limits the fuel quantity that can be injected into the engine. That's why the shifting point uh, from the driver, which is usually 11,000 to 12,000, is much lower than the maximum allowed by the rules, which is 15,000. Then we have the MGUH. So the MGUH is connected directly to the turbo. When dragged by the turbine, it generates energy. When turning the turbine, it drains energy from the battery. You have to know that there is no limit at all uh, by rules for this energy usage. The MGUH can be used to charge the battery when the turbo is rotating on the straight with the wastegate closed, to spin the turbo on the straight with the wastegate open, as we call it, to spin the turbo in braking when no exhaust gas are coming out of the engine, or to spin the MGUK on the straight. Now, into the MGUK. The MGUK is connected directly to the engine. When the clutch is closed, it turns together with the engine and the rear wheels through the gearbox. Uh, the concept is actually very similar to the old curse, you remember, we used uh, before 2014. But it has double the power, 120 kilowatt in boost and 120 kilowatt in your recovery. The recovered energy is stored in the battery and there is a limit of storage per lap, which is a maximum of two megajoules. The energy storage can provide up to four megajoules energy to be boosted per lap. However, some energy can come as well from the MGUH on the straight, since there is no limit at all on energy transmission in between the two unique, as long as it does not pass through the battery or the energy storage. Finally, uh, the energy stores are the battery located under the fuel cell of the car. So very, very low, as low as possible, because it's quite a heavy component. The energy that can be used on the lap is limited by the rules to a maximum of 4 megajoules. The energy storage can be charged and discharged by the MGUH, there is no limit, or by the MGUK, which is limited. The challenge, however, is to recover enough energy without affecting negatively the brake balance, which the driver will feel in braking. In some circuits, this might not be possible, and then the decision has to be made between reducing drivability or energy released. So that's it, a bit the, um, how this engine or this power unit works. So remember, internal combustion engine, MGUH, MGUK, and the battery. So that's it for the engine. Then the second uh, question, I had a lot of questions on the simulator. You seem very interested in the simulator. It's effectively a very interesting part. So how do uh, team uh, use simulator? So you have to know there is different kind of simulator. So some team use a platform on an hexapod with a, with a seven uh, piston, let's say, that move uh, the platform. Some other team use a rail. And actually, I have a nice little video to show you there. Uh, Look at that. So that's a typical movement of a uh, rail. You can see here, you can see the heave movement. Here, you will see the yaw movement of the car. And here, look at the movement in braking and acceleration. It's quite, there is quite a lot of movement. So it's quite impressive to give the feeling of the driver of the lateral G. So that's the kind of um, simulator you can have. Then regarding the screen, you can have screen fixed with the platform, like used by Ferrari or Dallara, for example. Uh, or the screen is actually outside the platform, a big 260 degree uh, screen with like six to eight projectors on the screen. 
Uh, you have to know that the tracks are bought uh, generally on a company called R Factor that used to provide uh, video games um, as well. The tracks are very expensive, between 50 to 100 grand actually for each track. So it's a big investment, but it's also very, very important for the team. And they use it with their driver who are coming before, sometimes during and after the, a Grand Prix. Why after? Because it's very important that driver first get a feeling on the simulator, then he drives the real car, then he comes back to the simulator and he can feel a difference. He can give information to this engineer. The car is actually braking like this. The balance is a bit understeer, but on the simulator, I don't feel this understeer. So then the engineer will seek, will trick the, will do fine tune on the tire model, on the queuing of the simulator so they can reproduce uh, a movement as accurate as possible. So it's a bit how uh, the simulator works. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this explanation on the engine, on the power unit, on the simulator, and see you next time for another episode.